This is conics and parametric equations. Here's our general equation for an ellipse. In this case, it's horizontal. So x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. Now we want to find x and y in terms of another independent variable, which might be t or theta or something else that we might want to call it. And then we'll have our parametric equation. So we can first start by rewriting this a little. So when we have x minus h squared, we find that the a on the bottom is also squared. So in reality, it's just x minus h over a, and the whole thing is squared. And same thing goes for y. So y minus k over b squared, and add these two together, and they sum up to 1. Now, we want to find we want to try and express things a little bit differently. So let's try and let's call this thing f. So this is f squared. And let's call this g. So this is g squared. Then we find that x minus h over a is equal to f. Now we want to solve for x in terms of f. And later on we'll find the relationship between f and g because we'll solve for y through g. And when f and g are related, then we can relate them both to our independent variable that acts as our parameter. So we have x minus h over a is equal to f. So we find that x is just equal to a times f and plus h. And the same thing goes for y. So y minus k over b gives us g. So solving for y, we get that y equals bg plus k. So now we find, okay, we have f squared plus g squared equal to 1. Now, when we're, think, when we're thinking about this, we might start and look at some trigonometric identities. And in this case, especially the Pythagorean identity of sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta. And we know that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared squared of theta is equal to 1. Now when we see these two parallels, then we could say, okay, how about f is equal to sine of theta and g is equal to cosine of theta? Then we find that, okay, if this is the case, then we can plug them back in to our equations here. So we find that x is equal to a times f, which is sine of theta, plus h. And y is equal to b times g, which is cosine of theta, plus k. So in this case, we're expressing x and y both in terms of our independent parameter theta. So this is our general general expression for parametric equations for an ellipse. And when it's a vertical ellipse, in that word, in that meaning that its foci are is parallel to the y-axis rather than to the x-axis as we see here, then all we do is we switch a and b. And we repeat the same process. So that was just for ellipses. Now what about hyperbolas? So this is the general form for a horizontal hyperbola, which is to say that it that its foci is parallel are parallel to the x-axis. So once again we can rewrite this as x minus h over a squared minus y minus k over b squared. And we have the whole thing squared. And once again, we have x minus h over a is equal to f. So we find that x is equal to a times f plus h. Same thing for y. So y minus k over b equals g. And we find that y is equal to bg plus k. So now we're looking at this equation again. And when we put it in terms of f and g, we find that f squared minus g squared equals 1. Now start thinking about those identities again. And well, it's definitely not the Pythagorean identity which we saw earlier, which was sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. 
But if we rearrange this such as f squared is equal to g squared plus 1, then we can sort of see how it might be related to our earlier identity. So we had that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Now what if we divide by cosine squared theta, for example? Then we have tangent squared theta, where sine squared theta over cosine squared theta equals tangent squared theta, is plus cosine squared theta divided by itself is just 1. And we have 1 over cosine squared theta, or also known as secant squared theta. Now we say, OK, look, we have g squared plus 1 here, and we have tan squared plus 1 here. We have f squared here, and we have secant squared theta here. So let's have f be equal to secant of theta, and g be equal to tan of theta, the tangent of theta. Then when we put these back into our equations for x and y, we find that x as a function of theta, for theta is our parameter here, we have a times f, which is secant of theta, plus h. And we have y as a function of theta is equal to b times g, which is tangent of theta, plus k. So these are our parametric representations when we have a hyperbola. And when the hyperbola is vertical rather than horizontal, in which case it would be y minus k over b whole thing squared minus x minus h over a squared. So these two, these whole fractions, would switch places. So it would be y minus x instead of x minus y as we see now, then it's simply a matter of redefining our f and g. So those are our parametric representations for the conics of ellipses and hyperbolas for their general equations.